alternately revered and condemned across the world, Ho Chi Minh was one of the more enigmatic world leaders who emerged from the ashes of the Second World War. His early life and rise to power remained shadowy, perhaps due to his usage of multiple aliases and general lack of reliable sources for his life before he came to power in 1945. Nevertheless, the available details reveal an intriguing life defined by the events of the first half of the 20th century and a great love for his country. Understanding Ho's rise to power is essential to understanding how Vietnamese independence was achieved and maintained throughout the 20th century. Ho Chi Minh was born as Wen Sing Kung in 1890 to the Confucian scholars Wen Sing Sak and Huang Ti Luan in the province of Ni An in Annam, French Indochina. At the age of 11, Wen Sing Kung's parents changed his name to Wen Tat Tain. His education was scattered across Vietnam as his father moved from the imperial court at Hue to various other cities in Vietnam. Despite this, he learned classical Chinese, Quoc Nhu, and French. Ho's studies came to an end when he was caught interpreting for Vietnamese demonstrators in Hue, leading to his expulsion in 1908. After three years of working as a teacher, he decided to travel abroad. Going by the name of Ba, he traveled as a mess boy on a steamship to France. Whether Ho chose to travel out of dissatisfaction with his life in Vietnam or in order to know thy enemy, the decision would have a profound impact on his political identity and the course of Vietnamese history. Ho traveled from port to port, witnessing the oppression of the people of French colonial Africa and black people in the United States. Eventually, he settled in England for four years, where he became involved with labor unions, such as the Overseas Workers Association. It is likely that England was where he first began his involvement with leftist causes. Ho continued his commitment to such causes when he returned to France in 1917 and immediately got involved with Vietnamese anti-colonial groups and the French Socialist Party. As the victorious Allied powers gathered in Versailles to negotiate a treaty to end the First World War, Ho wrote his Revendications de Peuple Animite, an eight-point paper that declared political autonomy and civil and labor rights for the Vietnamese. He signed it with the name Wen I Quoc, a pseudonym meaning Wen, the Patriot. Although the petition did not gain official recognition, it sparked the French police force's interest in him. The event gained him notoriety in both French, Vietnamese, and leftist circles, as Ho grew more and more involved in the French Socialist Party's activities. When the party split over the Third Communist International, Comintern, Ho joined the French Communist Party. It is likely that Leninist support for nationalist causes in the colonies was what first drew Ho to Marxism-Leninism. Ho's piece, Some Considerations on the Colonial Question, published in L'Humanité in 1922, reveals Ho's frustration towards the French brand of colonialism, entreating the French party to intense propaganda in the region. This piece, as well as Ho's relatively late exposure to Marxist-Leninist ideology, indicate that Ho primarily viewed Marxism-Leninism as a framework for nationalist revolution. In 1924, Ho, still using the name Wen I Kwok, traveled to the USSR and joined the Far Eastern Bureau, as well as began attending courses at the University for the Toilers of the East. Here, Ho gained experience as a professional revolutionary and participated in the Fifth Comintern. His speeches highlighted the importance of the peasantry as a revolutionary factor, which differed from the more orthodox focus on the proletariat. However, his understanding of the peasantry as a proletariat in a primarily agrarian country would prove crucial to Vietnam's approach to warfare in the latter half of the 20th century. Eventually, Ho's revolutionary experience granted him a position as a common term representative to the Kuomintang, KMT, revolutionary government in Guangzhou, China. Upon his return to Asia after 13 years, Ho went by the pseudonym Li Tui in order to avoid the authorities as he worked to transform the Vietnamese nationalist groups in Guangzhou into more progressive organizations. It was here that Ho co-founded the Association of Vietnamese Revolutionary Youth, the organization which would serve as the seed for the Indochinese Communist Party. He trained would-be Vietnamese revolutionaries, who returned to Indochina and began to build a network of organizations to further their cause. However, as Chiang Kai-shek began purging leftists from Guangzhou, 
Ho traveled to Siam, Thailand, to avoid arrest. In his absence, the Revolutionary Youth League had fractured into smaller parties. In 1930, Ho returned to Hong Kong and presided as the official Comintern representative over the consolidation of these parties into the Indo-Chinese Communist Party, ICP. Soon after, due to a leak in the organization, Ho and many other ICP leaders were arrested by the British. After he was arrested, Wen Ai Kwok, as he was still known to Moscow, allegedly died in a Hong Kong prison. This faked death contributed significantly to the mystery surrounding the rise of Ho Chi Minh, as few outside authorities would not recognize that Ho Chi Minh was none other than the veteran revolutionary Wen Ai Kwok until after 1945. Instead, Ho managed to escape Hong Kong, and after lying low for half a year, he returned to China in Shanghai and connected with the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, where he served as a health inspector, journalist, and troop inspector at Guilin, Hangyang, and Chongqing. From Chongqing, Ho was able to get in touch with his colleagues at the ICP. Using the alias Tran, he managed to travel to Kunming and connect with many of the men who would grow prominent in the ICP and the DRV. Secretly returning to Vietnam in 1941 for the first time in 30 years, Ho set up headquarters in mountainous Pak Bo. There, Ho set up the League for Vietnamese Independence, Viet Minh, foregoing the international, third common turn style of internationalism for a nationalist front that focused on the peasantry. The goal of the Viet Minh was national independence, with a focus on helping the Communist Party gain power after independence was achieved. Ho remained the driving force behind the Viet Minh's activities as they sought to carve out a liberated base area and wage a people's war in the Maoist fashion. As the Second World War raged in Europe and East Asia, Ho decided to return to China in 1942 to gain the KMT's support for the Viet Minh. This time, Ho used the name Ho Chi Minh, using the character from his previous Chinese surname to ensure that his Chinese colleagues knew he was the same person as Hu Guang. However, he was called Uncle Ho, displaying the degree of reverence, admiration, and respect held by his comrades. Ho's activities during the Second World War are especially crucial to understanding his rise to power. In four years, Ho went from the leader of the infant Viet Minh to the man who declared Vietnamese independence in August 1945. Although the time frame in which Ho Chi Minh came to power was short, the base of knowledge and support he built in his previous incarnations were crucial to understanding both Ho's personal rise and the ascendancy of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. The base of support Ho built was especially crucial, since Ho spent much of the remainder of the Second World War in China. When he was imprisoned by the KMT in 1942, the Viet Minh immediately took action, sending operatives to China to obtain his release. Eventually, the general responsible for his imprisonment, Zhang Fak Gui, released him and decided to use Ho to revitalize his own Vietnamese nationalist organization, the Dong Min Hoi. In exchange, Zhang promised Ho that he would be able to return to Vietnam, which he did in 1944. While Ho had been in China, the war had shifted in the Allies' favor. Though the Japanese remained firmly entrenched in Indochina due to an alliance with the Vichy government, the Viet Minh had expanded throughout northern Indochina and began establishing operations in the south. The possibility of an Allied invasion of Indochina was growing, and planning for a general insurrection grew more urgent as the Viet Minh aimed to have a revolutionary government in place to negotiate with the invasive forces. When Ho returned, he agreed to his colleague's proposal to begin forming propaganda units for what would become the Vietnamese Liberation Army, VLA. In 1944, Vietnam was also hit with a devastating famine, initially caused by bad weather, but severely exacerbated by Japanese and French exploitation of land and peasant workers. In the midst of the famine, the Japanese launched a coup d'etat against the French and set up a puppet government headed by the last Nguyen Emperor, Bao Dai. The American armed forces began their island-hopping campaign, leading many to believe that the end of the Pacific War was at hand. With the rapid escalation of events both at home and abroad, the Viet Minh decided that the time was ripe for increasing military engagement and expanding the VLA. Therefore, 
When the United States Armed Forces dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Ho was ready to launch the Viet Minh's general insurrection. Although the VLA was not completely equipped to match Japanese forces in Indochina, they moved southwards from the Viet Minh base near the Guangxi border towards the Red River Delta, where they were assisted by popular uprisings in the destruction of government power. Despite facing resistance from the Japanese, the revolutionary troops managed to seize power in a number of towns and cities across Tonkin. A military insurrection committee infiltrated Hanoi, the northern capital, organized revolutionary cells, and successfully took the city without bloodshed in three days. In the central region, known as Anam, distance from the Viet Minh base in the far north led to local party leaders taking matters into their own hands. Using pressure from the new government in Hanoi and Viet Minh cadres in the neighboring villages, the local uprising government successfully took power in the central capital of Wei. In the southern region of Cochin, China, a non-Viet Minh nationalist front had taken power in the capital of Saigon, and the regional representative of the Viet Minh managed to successfully convince the new ruling committee to ally with the Viet Minh. By the end of August, all three historic regions of Vietnam were under Viet Minh control. Ho arrived in the city of Hanoi to begin the formation of the first independent Vietnamese government in a century. Emperor Bao Dai abdicated his throne, and on September 2, 1945, the newly declared President Ho Chi Minh declared Vietnam's independence to a crowd in Hanoi. However, the Allies had already decided to separate Indochina into two zones to facilitate Japanese surrender. Meanwhile, the French government expressed interest in returning Indochina to their colonial empire. Ho reached the zenith of his governmental power as nearly three decades of bloody conflict over the nature of the Vietnamese government began. While Ho would live to see an independent Vietnam in 1954, he died in 1969 and would not live to see Vietnam reunited after the Second Indochina War. Nevertheless, Uncle Ho lived on as a revered, almost mythical figure in the hearts of the Vietnamese people. From the son of Confucian scholars to a traveling socialist, from legendary Comintern operative to father of modern Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh's rise to power truly embodies the effects of the tumultuous 20th century.